I've been using Premiere Pro for years now, but it's time to switch over now that I got the M1 Studio. But how will that turn out? Let's talk about it. Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, but regardless of Final Cut Pro, I do want to talk about what it's like to edit on this Mac Studio max edition real quick first so let's let's get into that real quick it's been great super fast i'm not having any kind of lag with really anything i'm doing at all bad things happen crashes lag all that kind of stuff really hinders you from editing and it just kind of takes you out of the zone like imagine being in your flow state and then all of a sudden boom crash it just completely ruins the whole vibe so it's really nice that that doesn't happen now that I have this. By the way, I haven't heard the fans at all. Like, I mean, yeah, if you're in a silent room, you can hear them if you listen really close, but you're not gonna hear them when you're in Final Cut Pro or whatever you're in. The phone's ringing, that's awesome. So I'm back, let's continue on with what I was talking about. Yeah, the fans, they're pretty much silent all the time. But next up, let's talk about the ports. So we have plenty. It's not to the point where I actually need them. It's just, it would be nice to have more, but I can easily get a dock. So it's not, it's not a big deal. It's got enough ports for all your basic needs. This thing is just super fast in general. And keep in mind, this is only the base model. As I told you guys in that previous video, just the base model is that fast. Honestly, just from using this, there really is no point in getting anything better than this unless you're gonna be using Premiere, which uses more GPU, or if you're gonna be doing like crazy Hollywood video editing, 15 tracks plus, like, you know, crazy stuff like that. Sure, you might want the ultra. For a YouTuber, bro, you're never gonna even reach the potential of what this Max can do. If you do, then you might have some settings wrong or something's going on because there's no way it's it's that fast. OK, but now we're going to stop talking about the Mac so much and we're going to talk about Final Cut Pro X. As I just said, I have used Premiere for years and years and I loved it. I used it since I was like, I think I just turned a teenager when I started using Premiere. It's been at least like seven years of Premiere. That's a long time to be on an editing software, especially for somebody as young as me. It felt like it was gonna be really hard to adapt to a new software. Let's just talk about Final Cut now. So to start off, we have really, really smooth timeline scrubbing. And that is a big deal to me because in Premiere, oh, really bad. Like you could not scroll hardly at all without frame drops and maybe with this max you could i don't know but with final cut oh so smooth the whole entire time no frame drops it's crazy man but i will be the first to say i am not a huge fan of the keyboard shortcuts on final cut so i did change those to act a little bit more like premiere it did help a lot in my learning of this software without that i probably would still be pretty stuck speaking of that usability was something i was pretty worried about i was like mm, like i said you know i've been on premiere for a long time now is that is that gonna work out me going just to a new software because i actually tried davinci right it's just not for me and that's not to say it's not a great software because i can tell just from getting in it and messing around for a couple days great software like for sure if you if you like davinci then awesome, use it. But it just didn't work for me. The next step I thought was Final Cut Pro. And I was worried about it because you know, you have to buy it for $2.99. I was like, mm, is this gonna be good? When I started, I couldn't find the buttons. Shortcuts didn't make sense. And structuring the timeline was pretty weird because you know, magnetic timeline versus a regular, whenever you move a piece, the rest of it doesn't go with it and Premiere. So I thought that was gonna be really hard, but I've actually gotten used to it pretty quick. After using it for a day, I got more confident, got better at it, started feeling like it actually made some sense after I had changed those shortcuts. So then that day, I canceled my Adobe subscription. Yep, I did it. It was actually really hard to cancel. It took me like, what, 30 minutes to cancel? And it actually wasn't even because it was hard. It was because it wouldn't load. Everything else would load, but not that. Literally go to a white screen. Yeah, it just sit at a white screen. But anyways, I'm actually really impressed with Final Cut and I didn't think I would be. That's the thing. I thought that, you know, it's going to be a really big step down and this and that and this and that adjustment layers and blah, blah, blah. I figured out the adjustment layer thing. Pretty good stuff. 
and I'm happy I did it. And now I don't have to pay that crazy subscription fee for the Creative Cloud. I'm still trying to find a really good Photoshop alternative. Um, I have Luminar which is really cool, good AI editing, which I would actually be more than happy to do a video about that if you would wanna see it. Other than that, I'm trying to find a good one for like text and merging images, gradients, stuff like that. Designing things, you know? And I haven't found anything that great yet. Yes, I used GIMP. I didn't really enjoy it. I might end up having to subscribe back to Photoshop only. It's kind of hard to do this kind of stuff without Photoshop, I will say. Kind of went off top a couple times, talked about different things, but all in all, super impressed with the Mac and super impressed with Final Cut Pro X. Not a big deal on the upgrade. I really thought it was going to be, but no, not a big deal. I, I adjusted so easily. And if you guys are thinking about going from Premiere to Final Cut, honestly, give it a shot. I think you can get a free trial. Give it a shot. See what you think, because it's actually really usable once you get a hold of it. And the audio, it's all nice. It all makes sense. Once you actually think about it and you get in for a while, you'll be just fine. So I was pretty much intimidated for no reason, but that's it for today's video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to know in the comment section below, be sure to smash that like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one later. Wow, I actually didn't run out of breath today. It's wild. Sorry if this mic setup looks weird, by the way. Um, new mic, we're going to talk about that soon, and also pop filter, because I don't have the right pop filter for it. So kind of an odd thing, right?